It's good to be with you today. I have been asked to give you some background and introduction to Zyto and our technology and where it came from and why it is what it is. Uh, a lot of times people will ask me, oh, uh, or they'll say to me, oh, you're the guy who developed the Zyto technology. And, and I always say to them, yeah, I'm the guy who gets credit for that, but really there's just lots of people that have contributed to it, and we've just taken lots of different, really disparate ideas and put them into a, a single package. And, and I've had a lot of help, so I can't take credit for doing it all. What I want to do today is introduce you to our past, our, uh, our legacy, basically, the, 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 the legacy that we're building on. Introduce you to some of the giants whose shoulders that we're standing on. Um, the, the basic idea behind our technology really started about 5,000 years ago, and I want to tell you a true made-up story about uh, how it all happened, how it all started. 5,000 years ago, in a country that we now know as China, there lived a man named Shen Men. Shen Man was the village doctor. He had been um, a doctor all his life. In fact, his father was the doctor, his grandfather was the doctor. Shen Man was a, a well-respected uh, man with a wide reputation. He could help almost any patient, but he had two patients that were particularly perplexing to him. A woman in the village by the name of Susan Lee and a young man by the name of Wai Mi. Both of these individuals suffered from migraine headaches. And it didn't matter what Shen Men did, he just couldn't help either one of these people. They would regularly have, in fact, why me, had headaches all the time. One day into the village came the, the territorial governor, a man by the name of Bai Guan. And Bai Guan was there because he was planning to go to war with the neighboring province and he was recruiting young men and uh, individuals to be part of his army. When he saw Wai Mi, he said, young man, you'll be a great soldier, here's your spear and here's your uniform, be ready to leave in the morning. Then he went over to Shen Men and he said, Shen Men, I've heard of your ability to heal and uh, treat people, I want you to be the army doctor, so I'm drafting you into my army. The next morning, Shen Man and Wai Mi left with the other troops, and uh, not long after, the war commenced. One day after the battles began, into the infirmary came Wai Mi. Wai Mi had been speared in his leg just below the knee, and Shen Man patched him up and left him to rest overnight. The next morning, when Shen Man came in to check on his patients, Wai Mi was smiling. He was really happy. And Shen Men looked at him and said, Why me? How come you're so happy? Because you got a wound on your leg. Why me? said, Well, you remember that headache that I have all the time? And Shen Men said, Yes. And he said, Well, it's gone. And Shen Men thought, Wow, that's fantastic. But uh, he didn't really know why. He couldn't explain it, neither could Why me. Well, the war ended. Bai Guan's team won. And everybody went back to their respective villages. Shen Men and Wai Mi went home to their village. Oh, I should mention that Wai Mi, uh, that Shen Men had a couple of daughters, but he didn't have any sons. It was traditional that you would hand a medical practice to your son, but because Shen Men didn't have a son, he said to Wai Mi, why don't you come in and be my apprentice, and I will then give you my practice when I decide to retire. So Wai Mi started to work with Shen Men. And a couple of days after they got home, Susan Lee came in and said, hey, welcome home, boys. Did you learn anything at the war? And, and Shen Men said, well, what do you mean? She said, well, I'm still having these headaches. I wonder if you've learned anything to help me with my headaches. And Shen Men said, Susan Lee, I'm sorry, but I didn't. And so she went home. The, ne the next morning, as uh, Shen Men was waking up, in that period of time between sleep and wake, when you get those epiphanies, in that period of time, Shen Man had an epiphany, and he, and he thought, I wonder if the spear wound is what cured Wai Mi of his headaches. Well, Shen Man had brought home from the war a couple of souvenir spears, so he went, uh, he took one of them down off the wall, and he went over to Susan Lee's house, and he said, Susan Lee, let me tell you the story of Wai Mi, and he related, and he related the story to her. 
He said, what I'd like to do, Susan Lee, if you're interested, is I'd like to give you a spear wound in your leg exactly in the same place where Y. Me had his spear wound, and let's just see what happens. And she said, Shen Man, I'm so tired of these headaches, I'd be happy to do whatever you suggest. So he took his spear, speared her in the leg, patched it up, and left. The next morning when he came back, Susan Lee was a new woman. Her headaches had disappeared, she was without pain for the first time in a long time, and she was a happy, happy camper. This started Shen Man and Why Me on a path of exploration where they would take sharp objects and they would poke holes in their patients, you know, little, little wounds, and see what effect it had. And over the millennia that followed, as other people started to experiment with this concept, developed what we know today as acupuncture. Now today we don't use spears very often. We use little teeny needles, and I'm going to show you one here in a minute. But we use needles, and uh, the points that we put these needles into have been determined over the thousands of years that this concept has been perfected into points that we know will have specific effects. And that's one of the foundations that, that Zyto technology is built on. Now let me continue this story historically. In fact, before I do that, I told you I was going to show you a needle. Here is an acupuncture needle. Now this uh, admittedly is a very small one. They come in different sizes, different gauges, different lengths. Uh, this needle is about as thick as the hair on your head. I can't say that about myself, but if you have hair, it's about as thick as one of your hairs. And it's very sharp, and if you put it into an acupuncture point, it goes in very easily. Most of the time, it's painless, but it's amazingly effective. What the Chinese developed was an understanding that your body has a component, an energetic component, that they called qi. Qi, they found, flows through pathways in an organized way. Those pathways we call today meridians or channels sometimes. And along those meridians are located specific points called acupuncture points. Meridians are named after the internal organ to which they're most closely connected. So you have a lung meridian, you have a large intestine meridian, a stomach meridian, and so on. And the energy, the chi, resides in those meridians for the most part, and it flows through those. And so if you have a healthy body, just like you have blood that flows through your cardiovascular system, you also have energy that flows. And if you have an obstruction in any one of those channels, it creates problems, just as an obstruction in one of your blood vessels would cause a problem. So the Chinese developed this whole concept of qi. Uh, you've heard yin and yang. Yin and yang actually predates Chinese acupuncture. Yin and yang is represented by a symbol called a monad. And on one half of the symbol is the yang representation, and on the other is the yin representation. We'll talk more about this later, but, but it's these concepts that were then carried forward historically and were built upon by other people who integrated them into their medical practices and used them to understand their patients more completely and to treat them uh, more successfully.